Hello and welcome to the Thursday, February 2nd, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, a OneNote files uh, that is currently sort of one vector how an attacker can smuggle malicious code into your network, even if you have uh, things uh, configured reasonably uh, tight. And if you can't really just outright block OneNote uh, files, then of course you need some way to detect these malicious files. Diddy has a great diary today with uh, some rules uh, to detect a OneNote file. First of all, uh, some uh, rules contributed uh, by Florian. Florian wrote some Yara rules that not just detect OneNote files, but also OneNote files, for example, with embedded PE, bad files, Visual Basic files, also link files, which is something that's a particular uh, has been seen here. Secondly, uh, Diddy also published some Suricata rules. So this way you can detect some of these files on the network. Diddy also explains sort of some of the artifacts that these rules are looking for. So you may be able to modify these rules or even adapt them to whatever detection language you're using in house if neither Yara nor Suricata will do it for you. I would say must read for anybody who is looking for some meaningful detection rules for this relatively new threat. And talking about defending, uh, Microsoft is doubling down on its support for non-Windows operating systems in its Microsoft uh, Defender line of uh, products. Microsoft Defender for Endpoint is now able to support isolation for Linux uh, devices. The nice thing with isolation is that it essentially allows you to remotely limit network connections that a certain device is able to establish if you are suspecting that a device is compromised. This gives you sort of the level of uh, isolation that hopefully will prevent any data exfiltration, but still does allow some limited uh, connectivity in order uh, to further support and analyze uh, the device. And then actually, I think it was late last week that we got uh, this exploit for uh, Chromebooks. Uh, they call it Shimmer for Shady Hacking Instrument Makes Machine Enrollment Retreat. Kind of a weird uh, acronym. But the gist of it is that it allows you to essentially jailbreak Chromebooks that are remotely managed. This is particularly important for educational organizations that often do hand out locked down Chromebooks uh, to students students with these exploits. Uh, these students are essentially able to jailbreak these Chromebooks and remove whatever sort of remote access control and such is uh, being established on these systems. And then we have new vulnerabilities in Image Magic. Image Magic has had a rich history of vulnerabilities. They're often caused by Image Magic essentially just calling external binaries and unsafely passing parameters. This particular set of vulnerabilities, well, actually just uh, two. One is a denial of service, not really all that interesting. The second one is kind of interesting in that an image being manipulated uh, by Image Magic could, after it's manipulated, contain a file from the server. So the way this would be exploited is that an attacker, for example, uploads a malicious file to the server, let's say a little avatar image or something like this. Image Magic is then used uh, to manipulate the image, let's say to change the resolution or maybe to convert the image to a different type and but due to a malicious textual chunk type uh, that is illegal uh, in PNG images, the image magic library could be tricked into including a local file to the image. So when you later look at the avatar image after it has been processed, it would actually contain the content of the file from the server. Interesting vulnerability and certainly something I think that's important enough uh, to patch as patches become available. Proof of concept exploits are already available. 
A little bit similar uh, vulnerability we also have in the DOM PDF uh, library. That's a library that can be used uh, to uh, create uh, PDFs in uh, PHP. Well, uh, here actually we do have a remote code execution vulnerability where if you are including an SVG tag in the HTML, you can actually then include a uh, href to a far basically a php archive that will then be executed the particular package is quite popular in that it has 85 million downloads however to exploit the vulnerability the attacker would have to inject that svg tag most of the time this is sort of used to convert HTML that's already on the server and the attacker doesn't have an influence over, but could be one of those sort of uh, cross-site scripting exploit leads uh, to remote code execution vulnerabilities. And just a quick update on stickers. I did up the daily limit yet again, uh, but uh, well, uh, I'll probably discontinue sending them out uh, probably this weekend or so I'll process uh, the last request. So get your request in and uh, thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.